Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Nine's Wide World of Sports and our coverage of the big one tonight from Football Park, the grand final of the 1992 Foundation Cup. Sturt going to the right of your screen into attack at the moment, but it's been the Bays thus far. They are 3-2, 20 leading Sturt, one point as they go deep into attack, uh, Sturt, but a good mark has been taken by Doofy. Conditions magnificent here tonight, a big crowd. Joining me in the commentary box is Neville Roberts and Kim Dillon. Thanks very much, Ken. Mansell with the football. Now in turn, the ball goes out wide to Duthie. Duthie likewise gets it over towards Kretschmer, keeps the ball lower to a well-directed pass and it finds Murphy. It goes back to Kretschmer and the Bays look pretty hot. The kick is long. As Ken mentioned, they have a strong breeze assisting them, but that ball goes over the line for a point. And uh, rather humid conditions, Neville, but pretty good for football overall. Oh no, it's uh, it's uh, it's a little bit of there's a little bit of breeze there going from the right to the left of your screen, Kim. But uh, take the point. It is a great night for footy, and players uh, having two or three games under their belt now, they'll handle it pretty well. But at the moment, it's the Bays. They've got all the run. They've had all the play. Wellsby playing full back tonight on Fitch kicks out to the outer side, looking for Bubner. It's a strong mark by Bubner. But Russell has got away from him on the half forward line on a couple of occasions. He beat the Tigers' last goal. Bubner now on the half back flank. Back towards centre wing it goes. Kitsky's the man he's looking for. Hamish Stewart was the spoiler for the Tigers. Back towards centre, half foot again. Packer in front. He's got to get a free kick, surely. Yes, he does. The only thing missing on that tackle was the, uh, was the saddle. So Seb Packer with a free kick. And he's a player worth watching tonight, this youngster in your screen. It's PAC Scholar, an absolute schoolboy champion. Tragically, a bad knee injury last year. Fought his way back. Doctor said, never again, lad. And, uh, we're watching him now. He's a Crows member and he's played some brilliant football during the Foundation Cup. He puts the ball out wide. That's rather indirect. That's where Stevenson led. But, uh, see, I don't know if that's a percentage move. And I've watched Stevenson last season, Neville, and uh, in the early game so far in the Foundation Cup, and he still sets himself a hard task by leading so wide. Yes, he, he likes to get out to, of course, you're live from Football Park, a beautiful stadium. We've already described it tonight, but he likes the pockets. I agree with you. There's no percentage there. Too hard to kick goals. And, Really, a player should come in behind him, and that's a better option. Bays up towards centre wing, and Russell again getting away from Bubner. Takes the mark a long way from his uh, half forward flank on the defensive side of centre. Goes towards centre half forward. In front, Murphy couldn't take the mark. Ted Whitten also a chance here for Hill. Hill with the football up towards full forward. Fitch in front. Wellsby does well coming from behind. Takes the football. Goes towards the safety line, but kicks it. Straight to the bear, which is Hallahan, and he kicks to Murphy. Well, not good defensive work by the Blues. Well, he played everything very well. The ball came in there. It was in high. He had to body fit, which isn't Wellsby's, uh, wouldn't be his first choice. He got a hand to it, pushed it into the defensive side. It was going to the boundary line, and then rather than just take it over the line, he tried to do too much with it. They're paying the price now, though. Murphy from about uh, 20 metres on a 45 degree angle. Has he kicked it? I think he has. No, he's missed. Gee, I could have mistaken my life that it uh, was a goal but the goal on pipe is in the correct but isn't only a minor score do you wish you had <laughs> the only two of us here then murphy grits his teeth disappointed it was a bad shot and uh, in big games it's unlo unlike him to do that mccully came from behind couldn't take the football but he did infringe it was a crude tackle and young robertson brendan robertson will receive the free kick so we've had just over 13 minutes of this first term robertson puts it up high on the members' wing, Kitsky underneath it, one grab, couldn't take it. Benny Judd gets the kick away, it's a wobbly one, didn't get a lot of distance. Hallahan, in fact, Visca is there. The tackle was high, play on the call, the ball comes out there from Keast. And the Tigers go forward, courtesy of Thompson, and players hit the ground. Firstly, Wellsby, then Fidge, and eventually the ball over the line for a point. And Sturt uh, in danger of getting absolutely swamped in this quarter. We've only played uh, 13 minutes and the Bays have had all the play. They've had seven shots at goal in this game. They could have almost put this game out of reach for Sturt. They need to tighten up and play out this uh, this quarter without too much more going against them. Wellsby comes towards Leonard. With him is McCulley. I'll contest the uh, kick in. Thumped away by McCulley. Mansell, little Nige around the corner. Beautifully done. And he finds the bear, Paul Hallahan. Those so third players uh, just losing their men. They're just not manning up properly. Too many players probably going to the fall of the ball. Which is too well at the moment. Hallahan will put the ball into the square. From behind. Great mark by Russell. Well, he's really giving uh, Butler the run around at the moment. Mark Russell. Four marks and five kicks. 
And Stephen Trigging, his screen, would be contemplating a change there. It's almost a must. M Mark Russell now with a chance to kick his second goal, and he's hit the post. Well, Sturt have just been let off in this quarter, let off five times, in fact, six times, in fact, nine, uh, nine shots at goal. And as I said earlier, the game could have been out of reach if it wasn't for some very poor kicking by the Tigers. If Sturt can get some composure back, he might well save them. Wellsby kicks to the outer side, and taking the mark is Leanett. Good work there from Bubner, just to get his body in the way. So Brett Leanett played pretty well last week. Now the ball out towards Kitsky again, sets himself, couldn't take it. He's opposed to Hamish Stewart tonight. Painter with the football, out towards Johns. They need this man to get into the game. The kick's not a bad looking one. Stevenson couldn't get there though. Taking the crumbs was odd. He's tackled. He's saying to the umpire, I haven't got control of it. And umpire David Elliott believed him. And so he should. It was a good decision. Legitimate, uh, legitimate claim and the umpire saw it well. 15 and a half minutes into this first term. McCulley wins the tap, but it goes straight to Jack Painter. He puts it up high. Gee, they need a grab, but uh, it's been taken by Hamish Stewart. And this lad has a future. Yes, I couldn't agree more, Kim. He's got uh, some, uh, some great talent, that, that, that youngster, over the back of the pack. As Lyndon Bow comes away with a football now, in towards Lamb, with him is Raymond. In fact, Graham it was. Back towards Bow from the centre of the ground, towards half forward. Fitch does it beautifully. Fitch kicks around his body, back towards full forward, but the kick's astray. Picked it up superbly, but uh, the kick wasn't as good. There's the... Uh Looked like he was just about to grab his hammy. I don't know whether that's a telltale sign, but the option uh, on that occasion was uh, to chip the ball back into the square. And Hallahan and others were there. Fitch didn't, uh, didn't obviously see them. Opportunity goes begging for the bays, and there's been quite a few of them go begging this quarter. Six, in fact. Yes, Glenelg, three goals, six. Sturt, just the one point, and we're approaching the 17-minute mark. Lena's had a pretty good first term. That should be a mark or a free kick, and it's just that as Field gives the ball back. They've got to keep the ball low and they've got to run it, but unfortunately they're not controlling it in this first term. It's been all the Tigers. The ball sits up into the breeze again. Underneath it was Thompson, close to the boundary line, and we'll have a throw-in. And uh, quite amazingly, we've had 15 years of night football. This is the sixth night grand final that the Tigers have competed in. They won in 82 and 90, lost in 78, 86 and 89, and they're pretty pumped up for tonight. As the Bays go into attack, Hallahan over the top, but in fact, he's been uh, waved out of play. And the boundary umpire will bring the ball back into play. Paul Hallahan on your screen, the player. Indeed he is. And uh, I just get the feeling, Ken, that Sturt uh, might just be a little bit over-pumped for this game. Very nervous and making uh, nervous-type mistakes. And uh, if, as I said, the, the fact that the Milk have been a bit offline in this quarter might just allow Sturt to get their composure, start uh, getting their possessions to hit a body and get a bit, uh, get a bit organised. The Bays into attack on their half forward flank. Bounce down. Murphy. Chance for Russell. Had a very good quarter tackle by Bubner. And the tackle forces the ball out of play. In fact, it was Johns. Forces the ball out of play. Russell had a very good quarter. Andrew Johns there. A brief smile. Good performer for the double blues. Tap down for Murphy. Painter. Dublin now with an opportunity from centering up towards half forward, but it's all the Bays back there. McCulley dropping back and in fact takes them up. 18 and a half minutes into this first term. Three goals, six. The Tigers stirred one point. The Blues go forward, but it's an unprotected goal. And getting back there is Rouvray. Waits for the bounce. Now goes out to the grandstand side where it's all the Tigers. It's three against one, and the mark's been taken by Visca. Plays on intelligently. Gets it out to Duthie. Thought about going infield, then thought better of it. Now kicks long. Ignored the handball, and rightly so. But all Blues players back there. In chip Simon Hill. Jossie Mail. He's a real terrier. But he's been judged holding the ball, and uh, that's a little bit stiff there. Simon Hill, one way, then the other. Placed himself under pressure. Nearly found a teammate there. Back there is Barry Shell. Couldn't pick it up, just bouncing off the shins. Tries to get a bit of space away from Hallahan. He did that well, a great turn of speed. Now the ball goes out wide. In fact, he was running that fast, he couldn't control the kick. That's to, to like Kitsky making the wrong decisions all the time and the mistakes, like that one of Shell's out of bounds on the foot. Up towards centre half, Ford Lamb is there. Players work hard for possession. And umpire Kevin Chambers will call for bounces. Uh, 
Chris Mellican comes on for the bays and Stewie McCallie goes into the bunker. And definitely nerves having a big part to play in, uh, in Sturt's uh, uh, problems at the moment. But they will settle down. Let's just hope they're not too far behind when they do. Kick back towards half-back. Thompson in front of Judd. Get to handball it by to Bo. Bo went back to Thompson, but it was a shocker. And goes out of play. Well, you mentioned, Neville, they are making mistakes, and we've just seen it from both sides, but uh, we're approaching the 20-minute mark. Three goals, six, 24 points to one point. Not too much damage done, considering the breeze. No, you're, uh, it's a good point. Uh, the last five or six minutes, Sturt have really held up, and they've pushed the ball over their half-forward line like they're doing now, but uh, if they could score a goal, they'd be in an ideal position. This breeze worth at least three, Kim. Let's say if they kick a goal here through Wobbs, they'd be in a beautiful position. It's a wobbly kick forward. Opportunity, Stevenson opposed to Rubray. Rubray wins out, and he's a talent, this lad. I think he might have found his niche in defence. The kick wasn't good, but Hill will end up with the football. Has two to beat. Managed to get an awkward kick away. In fact, it went backwards. Chicky over the top. Mail in from the side. Gibbs. The ever cool Ross Gibbs kicks around his body and the mark's been taken by Thompson. The handball is quick. Out towards Lyndon Bow. The Tigers running. They're running out of time as well. Jody Arnold couldn't control it. Looked to throw, but it went out towards Lamb. He just touched it. And Lamb, whoa! Oh, he's missed it. And Mick Pidgey was standing in the square. Well, he had to kick the goal. He was uh, running into the open goal and... Uh, Every coach would tell you to do it. It's only a mistake when it doesn't come off. Fitch could have expected it over the top, but it was Clayton Lamb. I mean, he's just such an accurate goal-kicking player. Absolute snack at training. And uh, the Sturt really been let off the hook here, Ken. Oh, unbelievable. As well as we kicked uh, out, taken by Mansell. He's tackled and tackled well. But according to the umpire, the ball is being held to him. So we've played 21 minutes into this first quarter. The Tigers 3-7-25. Sturt one point with the Tigers kicking with the breeze towards the left of your screen, which is towards the lake end. Towards Lyndon Bow, inside 50, up towards full forward, but again, inaccurate kicking, and the point is the result. So, uh, we know we've had uh, 11 scoring shots to one in this first quarter. They only trail by 25 points, so arguably uh, if uh, Sturt opened the second quarter well, kick three, uh, or four, and uh, they're right back in it. So uh, Glenelg buying a real opportunity to tie this game up in the first quarter. Yes, they, as long as they don't lose any heart from this, uh, all things considered, they're not in too bad a position, the Blues, considering this breeze. Chig Whidden with a wobbly one forward. And Wellsby did well to hold out Fidge. Oh, I think he may have held Fidge then. Play on the call, though. Now the ball's been taken by Robertson. He tries to keep it low, and he finds Josh Mayle. So the Blues just starting to get a bit of composure as Mayle kicks into the man on the mark. I knew I shouldn't have said that. Russell there, though. They have the numbers to recover. He tries to get the handball out. Back towards Mayle. The handball over the top to Robertson. That was quick thinking out to Russell. Now he gets one around his body, but underneath it is Visco. He takes a good mark. It's a bit of talent out here tonight in the 1992 Foundation Cup final as the ball goes in towards Mansell. He lifts the lamps and has a look downfield. He's looking for Fidji. Pushed well down, but that strength and a crook. Well, let's see it in replay. Fidge and Wellsby, they tackle each other. It was a, a hard-fought duel, one-on-one, and uh, Fidge won it fair and square. Oh, that's football, for goodness sake. This is what this great game's all about, is strength. And that would uh, Fidge use with body strength towards May with a handball. And it's uh, on for Young and Old. Mantle now having a ding-dong with Richter. In they come. Robertson's in there. So is Hallahan. A bit of uh, sniping going on in this uh, in this game. Late in this... Uh, in the second quarter, Lamb and Richter, the first quarter, should I say, Lamb and Richter had a bit of a scuffle in the last five minutes, and now we see another scuffle here at Centre Wing. So at quarter time, the L3826 lead the Blues one point. This game coming to you live from Football Park on Nine's Wide World of Sports. After the first term, Glenelg 78, Sturt 58. But uh, the big difference in the marking department, the Tigers took 21 marks as opposed to Sturt's nine. So let's see if they can turn it around. This young double blue side will be assisted by the breeze. They are kicking to the left of screen, the 92 Foundation Cup final. The ball punched out. Opportunity for Chig Whidden. Went without the football. Shell underneath it. Gets a handball out. It goes towards Leanard. He couldn't control it. Kitsky can, though. Does it well, the big chap. And the handball goes out to May. Josh May drives it in long. Two against one. Underneath it there was Seb Packer. But he was outmarked by the veteran in Chris Duthie. 
Duthie goes back towards the uh, half-back flank. And the mark has been taken out there by Kretschmer. You're going Kretschmer, one of the juniors here at, uh, at the bay. Off hands it goes. It's a shocking kick off the side of the boot and goes out of bounds on the full. A relieving free kick will be taken by Bubner. Centre wing out of sight. Sturt going to the left of your screen with the breeze and this is the second term of the 1992 Foundation Cup Grand Final. Into attack towards centre half forward. Packers in there. Kretschmer again pulled off the football. Good work on that occasion by the base as they come away towards Mansell. Kicks towards centre wing. Richter. Tackled by Bo. Goes away now for Graham. His kick finds off. Over towards Russell. Chance now for the Blues. Robertson with the football outside 50. Goes long towards full forward. A chance for Painter. Kick, uh, that goes through for a minor score. And it was uh, good quick hands uh, that uh, got them out of trouble there. Robson, Robertson really combining well. He was a brilliant player last week, Robertson. They're getting a few touches here tonight. And there's a good grab, not taken on the outer side, but Lena's having a grand game. Gets it back towards Josh May. May drives it out towards the pocket. Stevenson is there, but the ball travelled too far with the assistance of the breeze. And there is that breeze I'm talking about. So as you can see, it's quite steady, quite consistent. And we reckon it's worth about three or four goals. So Sturt right in this. If they can capitalise on Glenelg's inaccuracy in that first turn. Rouvray kicks it back to the outer side. Underneath it there was Melican. Heel over the top. Play on the call. Thompson, one of the bigger possession winners in the first term. Kitsky looking pretty good in the early stages of this game. There's two is Lena. Gets it back to May. Tackled by Chig Whitten. Always a terrier. Play on the call. And in fact, the free kick it will go the way of May, who was held when not in possession. Yes, live at Football Park. Magnificent night. And uh, just earlier there, Ken, uh, a free kick to against May. But earlier, uh, Seb Packer gave one away, which wasn't seen. Exactly. Malikin kicks back towards the centre of the ground. Boston working hard in there. Taken by Hill. Goes over to Chig Whitten from the centre towards centre half forward. Arnold back there coming out as Wellsby. Arnold takes the footy tackled. Wellsby almost hot in the ball as players work for possession. Arnold again. Scrambly stuff at the moment. And umpire David Elliott will call for a bounce. Away with the footy. And his jump has gone too. Very lucky Sturt on that occasion. Uh, dragged to ground Arnold or it might have been Wellsby but uh, definitely holding the ball. The umpire was unsighted. He could call. And uh, Wellsby a little bit lucky. Three minutes into this second term, and a bounce from about 30 metres out at the Tigers' end. Umpires officiating tonight, Kevin Chambers and David Elliott. And the ball punched back by Lena. That's a good tap out towards Richter. Richter lifts the eyes, kicks it long. That's what they've got to do with his breeze, but they've got to do it accurately, and he's given pain to the run of the ball. But uh, Jack, very clever. Didn't have the pace of Thompson, but I tell you what, he's got the football brains. As Kitsky works hard, gets it back over towards Seb Packer. He was tackled. In there is Robertson, pushed out of it by Hill, who's appealing for a free kick. You should play to the whistle. It's the only way to go. And he's lucky the Biscas there in defence. And Glenelg's defence and their desperation, Ken, uh, just uh, taking away the opportunities that Sturt are making. Yes, a good work by Mansell in the end. Taps it back to Rouvray. Does it ever so easily, Rouvray. Left foot kick back towards centre wing. Bowers there. And then it's Johns. The ball is forced out of place. Centre wing grandstand side. This action coming to you live on Nines Wide World of Sports. And as I said, the, the uh, Tigers' desperation was superb then. Sturt were only centimetres from getting clear and having a shot for goal. But good work by the Tiger defence. Malikin over the top. Scotty Field with a chance around his body. Coming out is Veska. Johns, neither, neither player... Budge, that was terrific start, taken by Obst, up towards centre half foot, a good mark has been taken by Seb Packer. Johns is winded, but that was courageous stuff by both Johns and Visca. they both saw the body, in fact it was Mansell. The action now with Packer. And a good mark too, Ken, and the value of playing in front, a loose, hurried kick in, Packer was in front, he's got a big chance tonight, he's on Duthie, plenty of experience. He's uh, a skillful player. Let's watch him from about 40 metres. Kick number two for Packer. As he opened the Blues account, he has a time. The first goal on the board for the double Blues. Well, it's taken one quarter and five minutes to get a goal. And uh, if anything settles your nerves, 
getting a goal was. Have a look at that. It was Viscal. We were right in the first place, Ken. And uh, all our good intentions misled you, but uh, a great piece of work by both those players. And Seth Packer, as I said, playing in front of Duthie on that occasion. A big task for the kid tonight. But uh, from 40-odd metres, very accurate under a lot of pressure. And that should settle the Blues down. Approaching the six-minute mark. And 3-8, Glenelg's dirt, 1-2, 18 points the difference. The ball punched forward from Richter, over the top, Chig Whitten, couldn't control it. Lamb in there, he gets the handle out towards Kretschmer. He in turn gives it to Heal. And all of a sudden, the Tigers have a little bit of space through Hallahan as he hooks this one back. Could it be the quick reply? Underneath it was Russell, couldn't take it. Buttoner's handball missed by Wellesby. Russell says, thank you, there's the quick reply. A quick reply, gee, it was only took 35 seconds. And Kim Hosman would be absolutely delighted with that. Remember, they're kicking into a stiff breeze. Sturt didn't score in the first quarter going into this breeze. Russell put one down. Bubner was the player. He tried to give it to Wellsby. A stray, a mistake. And unfortunately, under pressure, no one really to blame there. Russell capitalised. man for Sturt. And I really believe Stephen Trick should make a move. I couldn't agree more, uh, Neville. He really has given uh, Bubner the runaround. Bounce down. Mansell working hard. Richter back towards the centre half foot here, off hands taken by Biscuit. This kid's a good player. He is a real talent. Biscuit kicks towards half forward. Three players to choose from. Tick Whitten hesitating, so now's Bubner in. Bubner around his body with a high ball. Back towards Russell. Coming out, Biscuit the spoiler. Back to John. Kicked off the ground intelligently by Lyndon Bow. Goes towards Melican. Melican up towards full four. Not a good kick. And Arnold will take the mark. Will he go with a handball? Yes, he will. Over towards Shell. Shell goes to the outer side now. Looking for Josh May. The kick doesn't find the player. Heel comes in from behind. Back towards full four that the Tigers go. Robertson there. Can't take the mark, but he'll get a free kick. Will he? Yes, he will. And Robertson will take the free kick. And the double blue is not working from this position hard enough, Kim. They've they're just standing still, and I still think it's nerves. Other games, they have worked so hard when they get possession to make the play for each other. On that occasion, even if Sturdy got that kick away, no one downfield to take it. Well, as you mentioned, Neville, perhaps a little overawed. They're struggling to find some fluency, and uh, perhaps at this stage, just not taking the risk that they should take. Now, Bikitsky looking or hoping for 50. The umpire won't get involved in that. Gets a handle over to Johns. Put him under enormous pressure. Oh, crikey, you wouldn't do that to your worst enemy. Kitsky out to redeem himself, but he'll have to work hard as the handball. Well stolen by Robertson. He's been impressive, this lad, so far, as he chips in a pass and finds Scotty Field. Now, they should get it in there to the big chap straight away, and that's where the ball goes. Stevenson out in front, three against one. He kept his footing. He'll need support. Goes it alone, hooks it up high around his body. Nobody home, and the mark's taken by Visca, who's playing an absolute bottler. Yes, he goes short, which is a risk. Goes to Kretschmer, back to Visca. Visca again goes short looking for Duthie, but the ball will bounce out of play. Gee, I'm impressed with Visca and Neville. He's a reliable player, isn't he? And uh, he thinks about his football. He got back into the square there. He won't come off the line of the ball. He proved that just minutes ago with a magnificent attack on the footy. A good, talented player. He's put on a bit of beef up top as well. But Sturt just not making the right decisions at the moment. Reminds me of Brian Cobby. Taken by Packer. Packer to watch the kick is smothered. Gibbs is in there. And by Kevin Chambers will call for a bounce. Now, Ken, in, te in technical terms, both the bad players pulled that ball in. That is holding the ball. And uh, it's interesting to see how umpires don't interpret it as often as they should. Yes, I couldn't agree more. The bounce down. Chance for Bow. Chiggy. The ball goes out of play. And it's interesting. It would be nice to know what uh, Stephen Trigg did say to his players at quarter time. Probably along the lines, you know, line it off the ground there in your screen, going to the bench. Kitsky will do the ruck work here. But he's probably telling his players just to settle down. You don't have to do anything different in a final than you do every week. All players around the ball, think about it, concentrate. Still nervous. Lyndon Bow back towards centre wing. Young Schaefer on the ground. This is another fine player. This kid's got plenty of talent. Jim. Oh, he's very good. We spoke about him last week against West Adelaide and uh, he was sensational. He was perhaps Sturt's best player last week and straight onto the ground, stood his ground for a uh, good mark. Kitsky trying to paddle it forward, looking for the free kick. Duthie ducks the head, gets the handball out towards uh, Keast. Glenn Keast, recruited from the Geelong Juniors. Up high was Lamb. Mansell, quick hands but inaccurate. Goes out towards Graham. He's likewise, but he gives Johns the run of it, who drops in a short pass. And let's see if they can set something up here. See, it's about four against one back there. The ball put up high. 
Gee, they're just hoping that Stevenson can take the grabs, but he's being hopelessly outnumbered at the moment as Gibbs picks up the crumbs, puts it out wide, looking for heel, but it's too wide of that player and the ball out of play. And we get, of course, tomorrow, 20 minutes past nine, World Cup for cricket live from Hobart, Australia versus Zimbabwe. And Sturt doing the work around the ball, Kim, but just not getting their legs running to where the ball's going at the moment. Sturt uh, just not making those decisions. Uh, but if you keep working hard enough, uh, something's going to happen sooner or later. And uh, one feels if they don't drop their bundle, they still have time in this term. We're just approaching the 11-minute mark. They only trail by 24 points, so there's not a lot in it. They do have the breeze, but uh, I must admit, they do need a couple of goals pretty quickly. Well, Kim, they need to score in this quarter. They need to get uh, reasonably close because they're unlikely to score much into the win next quarter. And if the Tigers get four or five, that'll be the ball game. Thompson with a long kick back towards centre wing. And Schaefer again. A very fine young player. Well, the makings of a fine player, Schaefer. Towards half forward. Look for Stevenson, but it's all the bays back there. Thompson takes the mark. Five kicks and five handballs. Thompson in towards Lamb. In front, strong mark, Clayton Lamb. Very strong mark. What about the handball, but then decided against it. Goes the way of Mansell with him as Richter. Mansell in front, when he get the free kick? Yes, he will. The tackle was high, so Mansell will put the Tigers into attack. The lead comes from Fidge into the pocket. That's the way the kick goes. Getting back to Schaefer. Can he take the mark? Yes, he can. Oh, he's done by Fidge. And Schaefer will take, uh, take the mark. Good strong mark by the big fella, and uh, he's been taught well. Line gets back and does a lot of work in defence, and uh, this young fella does the same. Good move. And he'd been on three or four minutes, and that's his third mark. Underneath it was Kitsky, couldn't control it. Kretschmer in there, tackled high by Richter, and will receive the free kick. Richter not happy, but I'm sorry, that one was there. Now the handball goes out towards heel, but it will have to go back to Kretschmer. Jimmy Hodgman would be relatively pleased, apart from the inaccuracy of the first term. Apart from that, they've controlled the football. But Sturt's still in it if they can do something in the next uh, seven or eight minutes of this term. As the handball goes out towards Painter, he leans back on that kick. Packer from behind, not the best place to play, and uh, he's given the free kick away. It goes to Duthie, an experienced player. It goes out to Gibbs, a man with even more experience. And then out to a young Dasher and Hill who drops in a short pass. And that finds Mansell. He drops in another short one looking for Hallahan. Perhaps just uh, finessing a little bit too much there, the Tigers. And they may lose this with Butner has an opportunity. Used his body well, but went without the football. It now goes back to Hallahan. The short kick in towards Russell. He's having a sensational game. Called the play on. One to beat. Couldn't do it. And now goes back to Chig Whitten. But Scotty Field punches the ball over the boundary line. So there's uh, a lot of pressure out there at the moment. Players, uh, there we are. Beautiful jocks. Uh, Bubbler's wearing tonight. <laughs> At least his mum would be happy. They're nice and clean, Ken. <laughs> Schaefer over the top to field, but the kick uh, goes the way of Hallahan. Just inside 50. Up towards full forward it goes. Oh, Fitch being held onto, not paid by the umpire. That's Wellsby wearing number 59, goes out the way of May. May from centre wing as the Blues go towards their attacking area coming out Visca didn't take the football with him supported by Thompson was he out of play yes says the boundary umpire and the boundary umpire will throw the ball in those that's the uh, replacement pair of shorts coming out to uh, the governor not embarrassed at all about it all they're still doing plenty of work it's just not showing on the scoreboard at the moment Gretschmer tried to get the handle out has another go at it eventually the Tigers go forward and the marks been taken by Schaefer that's his fourth and that should be 50, and Tiggy's got one on the back of the nut for that. But uh, Schaefer's got every right to try and shake him off. i to just keep the wings down a little bit, though. Uh, Kitsky tried it from three deep. Couldn't do so successfully. Good body work by Fuel. Over the top, man, so you can just see how he's perspiring. He's working hard. As I mentioned, it's a little bit humid. Kretschmer once more uses the left leg. Nice-looking kick to give Murphy a chance. And have a look at that. He ate that one. Schaefer showed a lot of courage. He went back into it. Let's have a look at it again. Oh, it's, uh, and their backs were to us, Kim, so it's too hard to see who had the most of it, but uh, could even contest, I would say. Unlike you, Neville, I'll show a lot of courage and stay out of that one. Too far away. Now, David Elliott's picked out a free kick. And he'll go the way of Jody Arnold. Bit of just on the left there. Eventually, he'll put those shorts back on. 
slides it on. Beautiful fit. He's back in business. Josh Mayo had a great game last week. That's his best one. Picks up kick number eight tonight. Stevenson a long way down from the goals. And uh, perhaps the move's been made. He's gone to centre half forward and Kitsky back to full forward. And we've seen this happen on three occasions in recent weeks. And it's a good move because it just, just changes the focus and uh, there's different things required. And when Stevens has come out to centre half forward, he's moved around, he is a left footer. People tend to run to your right, so left footers invariably get more time. Let's just see how that works for the double blues. Chance now for the blues again. Out towards Shell. They're under pressure. May towards centre half forward. Kitsky. The forwards under an enormous amount of pressure. Rue Ray. Amy Stewart. Back towards Duthie. The Bay's become a little bit uh, flippant out there as we see Russell in now tying the ball for sure and certain. And the free kick, Lyndon Bowes won. It's just too long to get rid of that footy. I mean, it's fine to get caught, but uh, Russell just waited to be turned around. He just had to get rid of it quickly. Richter, and Richter takes the mark. So both sides now making mistakes. Richter centre wing, grandstand side. We'll put the Blues into attack. Good congested forward line. Kiski calls for it. Malikin from the side. Scotty Phil went without the football. Back towards Kretschmer now. Did it clever to Lyndon Bow. Bow from the defensive area towards centre wing and finds Keast. Keast now will put the Tigers into attack. They're 4-8, Sturt 1-2, and we've played 17 minutes into the second quarter. Good mark by Russell. He's part of Rip's of the game. Look at Fidge now. Going back there, coming back with him is Shell. Fidge almost a mark. Shell, Wellsby. Now Sturt should clear here. Chick Witten's there. Over towards May, the handball towards Arnold. May does the shepherding, messing about strip, they get out of trouble. Finally they do through Shell, goes towards the safety of the line and out of play. Gee, it was never. Now, that, uh, I thought uh, Fedge was pretty hardly dealt by there. I thought he should have got a free kick in that, but just dealing with what Sturt did. Three players to one, and, it, and to, to, to justify what we're talking about in terms of nerves, they really did panic those three players. One player had to shepherd, one to get the footy, the other to receive and run. The ball went out of bounds in the end. Very poorly played by Sturt. Lamb to Mansell, who lost his footing. In there is Graham, appealing for holding the ball. And let's hope that injury to John Fidge is not too bad. Let's have a look at it once more. There he is, he falls. And yes, there's his elbow. It just didn't bend it. In fact, went back the other way, if anything. And Kim, I don't know what you've got to do to get a free kick, but uh, you know he was absolutely mauled in the square. Very lucky, Sturt, not to give away one there. Well, he's asking to have his uh, arm bandaged now. A little bit of support, a bit of strapping. And gee, isn't, isn't he a player that's been dogged by injury over the years? As Robertson gets a kick away, and uh, the Blues fast running out of time to get a few goals on the board, and I agree with you, Neville. If they don't do it this quarter, they'll find it hard to get back into this game. Over the head of Gibbs, but he's first to recover. Soccer's it off the ground, quite happy to kick that one out of play, and we'll have a throw in. Ross would just be laughing, saying, how silly are these umpires? I run at the boundary line, I <laughs> look at him laugh. I can't believe that rule. What a load of rubbish. I mean, that's deliberate out on the full. You'll never see a better example of it. Yes, just kicked it out of play. The ball up high. And back there, taking the mark is Rouvre. And this is where they're breaking down up forward. They're punching the ball in there enough in their second turn, but they're just not capitalising. Visca over the top. Pulling over there with Stevenson, and the ball's been kicked out of bounds on the full. First mistake Visca's made tonight, Ken. Yeah, very good player. Johns now tries to run past Bo. Doesn't do so. Gets the handball away. Whoa! Down they go again, those two, Johns and Visca. Both are very fair with the uh, with the body. Robertson over the top to Gas. Gas towards goal. He's missed. Well, there'll be a couple of sore boys tomorrow, Andrew Johns and Mark Visca, I can tell you. Just getting back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, Kim, about so you don't have to do, I mean, maybe a bit more desperate, more concentration, but footy stays simple. And John's trying to round, run around the man on the mark, absolutely no percentage in it. Just get the footy in. They've got a couple of big blokes there, Stevenson and Kitsky. They're the blokes that have got to take the catches. They lose the footy again. Gibbs, this time with a kick out to the outer side. Melican. Chance for Painter. Oh, a terrific defensive work by Heal. That's desperate stuff and forces the ball out of play. And that's, that's a beautiful example of how Glenelg have played these first two quarters. They really haven't given Sturt an opportunity. I do believe they've settled down Sturt. They're a little bit angry with themselves now, but the desperation by the Tigers is interfering with anything uh, the Blues are trying to set up. 
Stevenson put it down to Kretschmer, who in turn handed off towards Gibbs. And there's another strong mark being taken there by Russell, and uh, he's been a very impressive player. He's taken seven marks tonight, and uh, he's given Bubner a bit of a hiding. We've had 20 minutes of this second term. Glenelg, four goals, 8.32 points, leading Sturt 1-3-9. And I thought Sturt may have been able to get back into this game in the second term, but the desperation of this Tiger defence has been too strong as Bo puts the ball out back towards the grandstand side. It's a beautiful pass, and he finds Murphy. Murphy in turn puts it out towards Fidge. Front position, couldn't take the mark. Beautifully rove though by Kretschmer. He's found plenty of the football. He puts it to the head of the square. Getting back there is Lamb. He couldn't take it. And eventually the ball punched over the line. But once again, that's, um, that's no different to what it did at the other end of the ground, Graham. 20 minutes, 21 minutes gone. We're into time on in this second quarter. And uh, just wonder what umpires think when they see those things. The rules are there for a reason. The Bay's into attack. Schaefer with a tap taken by Hallahan towards full forward. Arnold get back, gets back there. So does Wills. A mark has been taken by the Bay's right in the goal square. And there's the siren to end the second quarter. But the mark has been taken by Clayton Lamb. You see here in replay. Good strong mark. Well, Clayton Lamb had a running shot at goal in the first quarter. An opportunity to slip it over the top to Fidge. Made the decision not to. Catch to uh, Murphy there in your screen. He won't miss from this. Directly in front, Clayton Lamb. Kicks and kicks accurately. Canel 5 8 38 Sturt 1 3 9. And certainly a very impressive performance in the first half by the Tigers. So at half time in the 1992 Foundation Cup Grand Final, the Tigers 5 8 38. Stuart 139 on Nine's Wide World of Sports. It's Kevin Chambers with the football. Start of the third quarter here of the grand final of the Foundation Cup. Schaefer, Melikan, taken by Russell. Sturt towards centre half forward. Sturt going to the right of your screen. Ops pulled off the football. Players working hard for possession. Comes out towards Thompson, who played pretty well on defence for the Tigers. And a good strong mark by Schaefer. His fifth mark. Handball's off to Richter. Richter comes towards half forward. Ketsky in front. Should mark and does so. Thought about the handball to May. And finally he decides to go back and take the kick. Ketsky now towards full forward. Looking for Stevenson. Off hands it goes. Biska. Sensational first half to Thompson. There is Hallahan. Can't take the mark and the ball is forced out of play. 50 seconds gone of this third term. 5-8 plays 1-3. The Tigers with the advantage. The Blues going into attack. Just across their half-forward line. Kitsky pushed out of it. It goes down towards Chick Whitten. Kretschmer in there. Had a pretty good first half. Scott Field was a quiet player. He gets it out to Payne. His handball's very slick to Russell. Jimmy Russell round his body, but it's taken by Hamish Stewart, who bolts away. Puts out the handball to Lyndon Bow. He does likewise to Ross Gibbs, who's a long way out of his back pocket. He puts the ball up across the half-forward line. It's a beautiful passage of play, and Murphy takes the mark. And Seth Packer caught behind on that occasion, and uh, Amy Stewart taking the ball out of the Sturt defence. They were they forced an opportunity, and uh, Painter getting that touch to seconds later. Murphy's having a shot for goal. He has one goal. He kicked that in the first term. This is kick number five, and this really would deflate the double blues and their supporters if it goes through. It's a nice-looking kick. Oh, it's a magnificent goal. Sturt 1-3, two and a half minutes into the third quarter. Sturt going towards half forward. Visca coming out Rouvray. Soccer's off the ground. A chance for young Simon Hill. On the defensive side of centre. Back towards centre wing. Looking out there for Russell. Good play in the first half for the Tigers. Taken by Schaefer. Handball's over towards Field. Field towards half forward. His head and he shouldn't have. Should have taken the mark. Packer in front. Russell. They lose the footy. Taken by Kretschmer. Use that beautifully, young Dwayne Kretschmer. Found Keast at centre wing. The Tigers once more in towards the centre half forward. Murphy strong. Good mark. And that's the difference. Uh, you said that Damien Ops dropped his head without being too hard on the kid, Ken. He just didn't do this. He didn't say, this is my footy. Get out of my life. And uh, that's exactly what Murphy does. Grits his teeth and takes it. 
And there's a bit of difference in their intention, both sides at the moment. The Tigers just a bit more desperate. Murphy will kick from just outside 50. Read at his back. Can he uh, kick his second goal in as many moments? I think he has. Yes, he has. That's the Tigers' seven. Well, just a big game player, as I said earlier, and uh, that's what they do to you. Beautifully taken. Beautifully put in. By contrast, at the other end of the ground, the Blues just can't take these types of marks to get a set shot at goal. And Murphy, fully intent on kicking a goal. 50 metre line there, the breeze is fairly significant. We estimated at two or three goals, and he's second within minutes. Yes, four minutes into this third term, and the Tigers have added two goals to their tally. Seven, eight plays, one, three. The Blues are getting it out of the centre, but they can't capitalise up forward. Stevenson not having a big night. Rubre's doing a good job. It's picked up by Robertson. He's hooked it back. There's a quick reply, and it may give this young double blue side a little bit of heart. Well, my heart jumped a beat there for them on that occasion. Uh, Kim has Gask almost got in the road. In fact, it was Obstet got in the road of uh, Robson. But uh, Robertson was swift enough, quick enough. It was well crumbed, and uh, that was his seventh kick. And it's exactly where they need the little fellas to be. It should give the double blues a lift. They have failed to get enough of the crumbs tonight. And uh, as I said before, the desperation and the hard work of the Tigers to get numbers at the fall of the ball and then carry it away in numbers has outweighed the efforts of the double blues. Back in the middle. Seven, eight plays, two, three. Schaefer got up high, hands to the football to Painter, the field. The Blues again getting the ball out of the square towards centre half four, but Gibbs. He's got his experience in that occasion. Just pushed Sir Robertson under the football and took the mark. Kick number eight for Gibbs, out wide. Melican. Wobbles a kick towards half four, but Scott Field takes the mark. It's players like Scott Field and uh, Painter, they really need to lift in this quarter, Ken, if they've got any show at all. Pick number seven for Scotty Field. Kitsky, thumped away, chance for Johns. Back towards full forward, Ruve Ray Stevenson, one-on-one, -on -one a chance for Stevenson. Should have handballed away, but handball backwards, straight to Gibbs. Gibbs now with a football pirouette, back towards Ruve Ray, and the Tigers will come towards grandstand side. They're like ants here. Kicks towards Chick Whitten, and Chick Whitten can't take the mark, but he'll get a free kick. That was very soft, Mr. Elliott, very soft indeed. But Chick Whitten with the free kick. Yes, it was, uh, there wasn't a lot in that, but uh, once again, it was just so obvious. It put the umpire under so much pressure. There was no need to do that. He had to back into the player as hard as he could, and he would have forced the errors of Packer. Duthie kept it low. Richter there, the ball eventually out of play. Six minutes into this third term, the 1992 Foundation Cup here at Football Park. You're on nine and the football's live. Lonelgar 7-8, Sturt 2 goals 3. 35-point margin and young Schaefer comes from behind and does it quite well. Down towards Robertson, he's been one of the better players. So too Kretschmer, Robertson in there again. The handball was well intercepted by Murphy. Oh, he read that like a newspaper, then receives a free kick for a high tackle. Superb football from Murphy. The ball put in high. Fids back there. So too Russell. Opportunity now for, not sure who that was, Keast. <laughs> Gee, a la Maradona. And uh, Tricky's made some changes, uh, Neville. Thread gold is now on Russell and Bubner is on Murphy. Yes, that, uh, that had to be done. It's just that uh, Russell was probably the best man on the ground. But on that occasion, Keast mentioned earlier from Geelong, in fact the uh, information from the rooms were that uh, he went to Geelong from Glenelg, so in fact he was one of their juniors originally. Barton to the mark. In defence, oh, kick straight in the man on the mark. How bad is that for goodness sake? Back towards Russell, Russell towards full forward, Wells being pitched, pitch too strong, can he get there? No he can't. And the ball is forced through from line of score, how bad was that now? Well, what's become a, a great opportunity for Sturt is uh, bordering on turning into an absolute nightmare for them but once again uh, sides that make finals that have come from from nowhere and still had a bad season last year they've always got to go through this pain before they uh, they get angry enough to say it won't ever happen again off hands to keist back towards full forward wellsby chick Whitten chips in tackle by wells was a good tackle the checking's been very good in that occasion the step break away robertson mistake with his hands goes back towards schaefer a shocking handle by the youngster. Kretschmer chips in. Hex towards full forward. Russell, Murphy, Murphy around his body. Will it come back enough? No, it won't. And the goal umpire says it's out of bounds on the full.
Um, that's not being unfair. Outright panic. Uh, they had three or four players. They outnumbered Sturt four to one. The Glen Elk four to one. Uh, they just needed a cool head to work it out, and uh, they would have brought along this uh, grandstand wing. But uh, Jaffer just panicked a little bit and gave up the footy. Up high was Thread Gold. He couldn't control it. He's in there working hard, and the ball is just outside the 50 metre line from the Tigers' goal. Umpires, as I mentioned earlier, Kevin Chambers and David Elliott. Kevin Chambers about to put the ball to ground. Just outside the 50, Schaefer there, didn't win that tap. Goes down towards Russell, he can't control it. Chig Whidden in there like a terrier, and he's the acting captain for the Tigers tonight, as he has been right through this Foundation Cup series. And the breeze has dropped here at Football Park quite significantly. In fact, there's very little movement at all at the moment. And uh, if the, the only hope at the moment for Sturt, I think, is if they can all drop their concentration a little bit and uh, the double blues can get in with two or three quick goals. The well, conditions are good and it's not uh, impossible for a side to kick four or five in about 10 or 12 minutes. They're just not playing with enough poise and polish. And plus, the Tigers are a bit too strong in the air. Well, far too strong. And bodying... John Fidge is uh, the last thing that uh, David Warsby really wants to do. He, uh, he really should get back on him and jump into the play. Have a look at the size of Fidge uh, by comparison to Wellsby. It's not the best option he could have chosen. Maybe he was caught a little bit out there, but one-on-one, uh, -on -one, man to man, too good. And he's posted his first goal, so Wellsby's done a pretty good job. Back in the centre, the Tigers 8-10, 58 to 2-3, 15. Ten and a half minutes into the third quarter of the Nation Cup Grand Final. Schaefer, Melican, bounce down. Big men contest it. Schaefer towards Russell. He kicks off the ground. Ops comes out to the base. Too good in defence. Visca ends up with a footy towards half forward. Shell, Chidwin, Shell with extra pace. The ball will be taken out of play. So it's the Bays into attack. Half forward left, going towards the left of your screen. And the Tigers well and truly in control too. They're, um, as I said earlier, they're, ma they're, they're managing the ball around the ground. They've got numbers where it counts and uh, Sturt, no answer at the moment. Hallahan tilts it forward. It's picked up by Butner. He gets it back to Shell, puts it up high, setting himself Kitsky. It'll be three against one. Coming from behind was Melican. Now the crumbs are nicely picked up by Russell. He gets it out to Painter. It's a nice looking drop punt kick. Oh, and beautiful work by Visca. Stevenson had his name all over that. Visca put the mid out and showed great courage. Doofy now. The ball out towards Russell again. Now it's picked up by Seb Packer. He puts it out wide. It's not a good kick. Scott Field in there working hard. Now the handball goes over the top to Gibbs, who tries to soccer it off the ground. Stevenson does likewise. And they'll have a throw in 50 metres out from the double blue goal and uh, assistant coach Tony Roach with the moustache and hands to the side of his head just contemplating what he and his coach Stephen Trigg can do to try and turn this game around but uh, one wonders whether there's any chance of that happening the intensity of the Tigers is too good Gas gets it over towards Painter Painter likewise to Johns back to Gas they're working well in close out to Johns can they make it happen to Scotty Field he lines up the goals and just nothing going right and that ball out of bounds on the floor. And John Fidge has gone off the ground. Uh, Alan Bartlett's come on and already Wellsby and him right into each other. But uh, in heavy traffic at the moment, uh, the double blues just not getting, uh, just not in control. They just can't make something happen in the free upper player. Ruve Ray, Hamish Stewart. It's a long ball back towards half forward. Russell up high. Couldn't complete the mark. Chance now for Graham. Shell is there as well. Tackle. Fred goal on the bottom of the pack. But umpire Ellis says it's my footy. I'll have a bounce. And there's uh, Fidge in agony at the moment with that elbow, which uh, happened in the second quarter. And it looked to be a nasty one, Neville. Yes, it's uh, anything around that area with a joint is uh, always very painful, Kim. Shell towards Russell. And Russell paddles the ball out of place. So 13 minutes gone in the third quarter. Tigers 8 10 to 2 3. I don't really know what Stephen Creek can do. Uh, he's. Uh, he really just needs players like uh, Painter and Fielder, as I said earlier. Robertson, who's starting to get some more kicks. Russell to come into the game. And they've just got to get players to start doing something with the footy. At the moment, too many mistakes, even when they have possession. Mansell's handball was very good to Hallahan. And 
I tell you what, they've missed some very easy goals tonight, uh, the Tigers, and Callahan may well run his hands through his hair in desperation and despair, but uh, he just shouldn't miss goals like that at this level. Well, they've had uh, 19 scoring shots, Kim, to five, so that really just tells the story. The ball down to Gibbs, he cleverly taps it out towards Hill. He goes back to Mansell. Mansell drops in a short one and finds big Chris Malachi. And there's 50. It should have been, but it's not. Short pass. Kept low. Goes straight to the chest of Robertson. Player Neville was just talking about. The hand was good to field. They've just got to finish off their work, and it might give them some encouragement. The ball goes up high. At the back there is Visco. He's played a tremendous game. The handball is good to Hamish Stewart. He puts in a high ball. Up towards and a half for the Tigers go. Off hands. Chance for Clayton Lamb. Kicks around his body. But the ball will go out of bounds, and in fact out of bounds on the full. But they really do work that ball out of defence magnificently, the Tigers. You read Lipskin? <laughs> Cheryl with a footy. Back towards half back. Good mark by Scotty Field. Towards centre wing, Ketsky. Oh, great mark on that occasion by Hamish Stewart. That's the difference between the two sides. That desperation on that occasion shown by Stewart. Long kick back towards centre half forward. Hands. Mansell in there. Painter with good hands, Painter. To Russell. To May. Oh! That is head pulled off. To play to advantage. Towards Shell. Half forward he goes. Visca back there. That wasn't the top mark. He's just outright best man on the ground at the moment, Ken. Strength personified. Not a good kick, but Gibbs is there. Gas gives chase, but the ball bounced beautifully for Gibbs. Goes towards centre wing, and it's all the Tigers. It certainly is. They're just a class above Sturt tonight. As the ball goes out towards Hallahan, they're using the ball better. They have loose players everywhere. The pass was speared in then towards Bartlett, he couldn't take it. Murphy close to the boundary line, and it's out of play right by that blood pressure sign, and uh, Stephen Trigg wouldn't be too good at the moment. Just a reminder, it's at 20 minutes past nine tomorrow morning, World Cup cricket live from Hobart, Australia. And let's hope they can get some points tomorrow, taking on Zimbabwe. I think uh, Stephen Triggs in Sturt's case is uh, about as good as Australia's at the moment, Ken. It's not flash, there's a snapshot, inaccurate. One more point to the Tigers. We've just passed the 16-minute mark of this third term of the 92 Foundation Cup final. Lanelga, 8 goals, 12, 60 points, leading the double Blues, 2-3-15. And uh, they've shown some courage, the Blues, but uh, they're just not using the ball and they've been a little overawed tonight. But once again, this lad has been impressive in Schaefer. My word he has, Kim. Six marks, takes the hell, gives the handball to Shell. But again, look at that young man, Hamish Stewart, playing an absolute rip snorter in defence. Well, they've gone back to their original lineup. Kitsky at half forward and Stevenson at full forward, Ken, and it's not working for them. The Bay's back towards half forward. It comes towards May now. Young Josh May with a chance. Touched off the boot. Back towards Russell. Russell will take the ball out of play and the will take place. Deal is there. And Fidge. Got his arm packed in, in ice. Looks on. Strong man, John Fidge, but uh, ice on the elbow. Melican tried to tap it down to Chick Whitten. Well done by Scott Field. The ball will have to go back. And it's not a bad throw from Kimmy Russell. Covers about 25 metres. Field puts it up towards centre half forward. Stevenson is there. That's the 11th kick for Field. The handball is good. It goes out towards Johns. I don't understand why this boy is not playing in the centre. Now Russell kicks into the man on the mark and that man Visker again, he has no fear, straight at the football and the body. But uh, you know, I think you've got to give credit to Glenog on that occasion, and particularly Visker, but uh, Russell's decision to hang on to the ball for so long. There's the throw in, three players back there, Robertson has it, snaps around his body. And a free kick maybe, so maybe the Blues a chance to goal here. The ball went over the line for a point. Umpire Kevin Chambers rightly asked if he wants the kick, and I think the answer will be the obvious now. Yes, he's not going to say no to it, is he? But uh, he's 40-odd metres out, uh, kicking into a slight breeze. It's picked up a little bit and uh, might just be beyond Robertson. But uh, with so much time elapsed, all options will be covered. I would suggest he'd have a shot at goal. He's had eight kicks and six handballs. He throws a bit of Dougie Butterfield, the curator here. Football park turf up into the air. Sees the breeze, he's going from right to left, and he's kicking into it. 
to start it to the right goalpost. He puts it up high. He lets the breeze do the work. And that's a brilliant kick. Sturt 3-3. Sturt with the footy again through Gast. Comes towards half forward. Visca. Well, I can't. Oh, almost caught one after his kick on that occasion from young Seb Packer. That's most unlike Seb Packer. Joshua May with the mark back towards centre half forward. Off hands it goes. Stewart. Johns threw it out towards Painter. Painter to Robertson. Towards Ops. He's too slow as Bo comes in. Gets his kick away. Has he kicked the guy? I think he might have That's the fourth goal. They're back. About to hit time on Grinnell, 8 goals, 12-60, Sturt, 4 goals, 3, and the double blues with somewhat of a mini run on here. They have the momentum, and strange things can happen in this game of football, and who knows, the ball put up towards Stevenson, they need him to grab a couple. Hamish Stewart's got the football, Lyndon Bowe, brilliant handball as he fell down, out towards Chig Whitney, Spears out of pass, looking for Hallahan. Shelley's back there, so too Graham, who was held. Mansell couldn't take it, back in there desperately is Graham, appealing for the free kick. And uh, as we approach the 21 minute mark, 8 12 to 4 3. And one could suggest that another goal here and then the breeze in the last quarter, and you never know. One could, but uh, Sturt uh, not moving the ball anywhere near as efficiently as Glenelg. You saw that way it went down that far wing. They're really moving it quickly, the Tigers. Stevenson to paint out, another goal before three quarter time will be a handy to Russell. Russell towards Ketsky, but getting back there is Gibbs. The Bay defence is magnificent. And that the judgment involved in there was just superb, Ken. He took the risk. He read it beautifully and uh, a great catch. Ten kicks to Gibbs, who kicks to uh, Thompson. Thompson with a long one back towards half forward. Getting back there is Threadgold. Use his body well on that occasion. Chris uh, Threadgold. The Blues towards centre wing. That's a poor kick straight to Thompson. And Thompson takes the mark. Thompson. Ten kicks and six marks. Up hands to Chig Whedon. Towards centre half forward. The thread gold again. Now Leeds coming from the grandstand side. You can take your pick here, Richter. Well done by Mansell. Tackled by Wellsby. And the ball's being held to him. Well, that is just a perfect example. I mean, they had the play switch. The kick just wasn't deep enough. It had to go over the player's head, give them the run and let them kick on. One there to Shepard, but uh, it's just not happening for Sturt, and they're not making it happen. 33-point advantage to the Tigers. Gas, the handle goes back. Well, well intercepted there by Keast. Glenn Keast. Now Gas gets another opportunity. Keast in pursuit. And Gas happy to see that ball over the line. And in fact, will pick up a free kick. So Jeremy Gas with the football. Kick number three. Started on the interchange bench. The Blues running out of time in this quarter. They notch another goal. And good mark taken there by Russell. He's got to get it in quickly, though. No movement whatsoever up forward. The ball goes in towards Obst. Visca with a superior body strength. Stevenson couldn't get the handball out. He's not having a big night, Jamie Stevenson. Hasn't been given a lot of opportunities, though. That was cleverly tapped out towards May. Test of courage here. Robertson tried to punch it forward. It goes to Thompson. Nobody home for the Blues as the ball now goes to Gibbs. Back to Thompson in the old 1-2. Now the ball's put up high. Players set themselves. Great desperation by Graham. In there the handball from Shell. Back to Clayton Lamb. Lamby over the top to Hill. Gas through solidly. Likewise Mansell. Lucky kick. Goes out towards Kretschmer. Bullet-like hand pass. Not controlled by Chick Whitten. In there is Richter. And he goes one way. That's straight through. But he left the football behind. Now it goes back to Hill. Up forward looking for Bartlett. The ball rushed over the line. And a point results. It would be an interesting uh, exercise for uh, Stephen Trigg to go back over the replay and count the number of times a handball has actually been intercepted between its deliverer and its, uh, its proposed receiver. And it's just not good enough. An amazing amount of times as the Tigers 8-13, Sturt 4-3. Field towards centre wing. Jumped away from Seb Packer and the ball goes out of play. Duty was the score. And we see the Tigers in front by 34 points. And uh, Ken, unfortunately for uh, Sturt, really did turn up the heat on that occasion, but uh, just couldn't get enough players into the game. Uh, Robertson did a few things. Uh, Russell came back into it a bit more. And Painter, they're all good signs for Trigg. Big Stevenson and Kitsky just not doing enough up forward. And they didn't have any goal kickers. 
Hawks, on the other hand, the Tigers, brilliant desperation. You've got to give them absolute credit for at every ball, at every situation. They're desperate to win this game. They haven't eased up. They haven't lapsed their concentration, and it's definitely showing on the scoreboard. So at three-quarter time, it is Glenelg leading eight goals, 13, 61 points. Over the double blues, four goals, three, 27. We'll be back with the big final quarter shortly. Back and make a real go of it. Melican in the ruck, the ball tapped down towards Johns. He lost his footing. Trying to soccer it off the ground was Bow, and he did so successfully. Josh May in there, so too Barry Shell working hard. But umpire David Elliott will bounce. As the breeze just springs up a little bit here at Football Park. Elliott officiating with Kevin Chambers tonight. They've done a pretty good job. Painter gets a little kick away. Not effective though as it goes out towards Bow. He puts one around his body. That in turn goes to Glenn Keast. Keith finds a little bit of space, puts the left foot kick out there, searching for Russell. He couldn't take it. Lamb. Well, it just appears that Clayton Lamb is trying to boot the leather off the football tonight. And uh, as Murphy takes a mark, and that just comes with lack of match practice. But this man, he's back into the side tonight, but he's showing great form. What beautiful judgment on that occasion. Eighth mark, in fact. And uh, as he was watching that ball come in, Bubner and others were jumping all over the place. But sturdy, eyes fixed and uh, cool as a cucumber will kick this he's kicked three already there's no reason he shouldn't kick his fourth and he has so the value of experience and uh, a smile on his face why not Clayton Lamb we're talking about him at half time a player who's just really always around the place at the moment and uh, not quite happening for him but there they were there was Willsby there was Bubner there's the shove but uh, no one saw it Players everywhere, Sturt players amidst it all. Out comes Michael Murphy with the ball. And uh, he's done well tonight. That's his third, fourth goal. And he's been a star for the Tigers. 9-13, Sturt 4-3. Gibbs off and Bromelo on for the Tigers as Russell takes the footy. And balls to Painter. Chance for field now outside the 50, but a long kick up towards the full forward. He got the distance, but sadly not the accuracy, and only a point. The Sturt go to 4-4-28, the Tigers 9-13. Phil's lifted his game since uh, since quarter time, and uh, he's, done, he's done a fair bit to uh, to keep Chig Wooden down and uh, pick up a lot of possessions himself. Good mark taken by Melican. And uh, I saw Chris Melican during the year that he had off, and he whacked on a bit of weight, lost a bit of condition, but he looked pretty trim at the moment. The Tigers go forward again. It's a high kick from behind is Richter and eventually he takes that ball over the line live at football park on minds of wide world of sports I mentioned earlier Lanil playing in their sixth night final yes, we've been experiencing these night finals over the last 15 years they played in six they've won two that was 82 and 90 they lost in 78 86 and 89 and at this stage, Ken, it does appear they'll add to that list the grand final victories. And they'll pick themselves up $17,500. Attendance tonight, 18,710, which I think is an excellent crowd. Magnificent night here at, uh, at the footy park. Kicks towards centre half forward, Mantle. Josh May should have taken that mark. So that was Murphy in. The handball to Lamb at his feet. Over now to Rubinick, who's going to the ground. Keith over to Chigwitten. Chigwitten from 30 metres says thank you very much. That's goal number 10 for the Tigers. The Tigers 10 13 73 Sturt 4 4 28. The ball goes out towards Bo. Slick handball out towards Mansell. He puts his side forward. Underneath it is Clayton Lamb. Punching it away is Graham. Gains about 10 or 15 metres for his side. Going through is May. Picked up by Bartlett who started on the interchange bench. But in fact that ball has gone out of play. Big man Alan Bartlett. And uh, so too is this man as far as height's concerned. It's Brett Leanett. He started in the ruck and was replaced by Schaefer. Indeed, and there's Schaefer in the ruck right there. But uh, they're looking pretty good in the big man department, Sturt. And uh, whilst this has been a very disappointing night for them, uh, there will a lot, a lot of come out of it. And Trigg will be able to point back to this all season and uh, for improvement. Field kicks towards Stevenson, who leads from centre half forward a long way from home. The ball goes out of play. And Ken, the, uh, the danger for Sturt is that uh, the players drop their heads now. What the, the real task is, is to finish off, not only for pride's sake, but uh, to really carry out a game where there's been a lot of pressure and, uh, and that they actually uh, 
once they've got their composure, which they have now, to uh, to keep their intensity up until the final siren. If the Bays have possession, Kretschmer towards full forward. Fred Gold is there, but a free kick has been paid. The other way of the Tigers, Mark Russell. Unfortunately, let's have a look at that. Uh, no, there was, uh, if you notice, Russell was hanging on to uh, the front of Fred Gold's uh, jumper, and uh, that's just uh, good forwards armory. And on that occasion, beat the umpire with it. Kick number nine for Russell. Has he kicked accurately? Yes, he has. Turn over the goal umpire's head. It's into the final term. 11 13 plays 4 4. The Tigers lead a change in ruck. Lean it onto the ground along with McCulley, and they both contested that centre bounce. The ball goes out towards Lyndon Bow. It sits nicely. He lifts the eyes. He's out there searching for either Lamb. Lamb had front position or Bartlett. Eventually Wells, but he's had plenty of work to do tonight. The uh, defence of the Blues has been bombarded. It's a slick handball by Lamb. Put it out in front there of Russell, who's been a very consistent player throughout the evening. Going through like a tram there is Mansell. He lines up the goal. Should kick it, and he does. Kick number 13 for Mansell. Well, I guess uh, Stephen Trigg would be praying that uh, these players will start missing goals now. They missed plenty in the first quarter, but uh, Mansell, plenty of time to steady and have a look at that. And the pressure really gone out of this game, and then the pace has too, as we predicted in the, uh, in the first part of the show. The game is well and truly over. It was Russell again. He's been a great forward for uh, the Tigers tonight. He just had to raffle that one there. Mansell was the player doing the running into the open goal. Very precise. Tigers 12-13, Sturt 4-4. Very impressive performance by the Tigers tonight. Their youngsters and the experienced players, they're going to have a very, very good year. It's Buffner with the footy. Towards centre half forward. Amy Stewart used the body but couldn't take the mark. That is Bromelo with a kick who came on in this early part of the, uh, the final term. Bow picked up by Duthie. Back playing league football again for the Tigers. Rubinick goes over the way of Bromelo. It's all the bays here. Russell. Back to heel. Tigwid almost the mark. Taken off hands by Shell. A handball away towards Glenn. Tackle by Chigwitten. In comes Fred Gold. Chigwitten tries to tap it back. The ball goes out of play. And Glenelg have been very impressive with their tackling tonight. They've really made them stick. I mean, the, you can actually break a tackle on uh, you know, four out of five occasions if you're really running at pace. But tonight, Spurt have really found they've been caught every time. And uh, great work by the Tigers. Jeremy Gast took the handball, puts it up towards the centre wing. Loose ball, but a free kick's been picked out. It will go the way of the Tigers, and that will go the way of Stuart McCullum. So, both sides have worked hard, but it's been the Tigers who have finished off their work. McCully puts it up towards centre-half forward, and they've certainly found more of the football. It's punched away from Murphy. Going through is Josh May. Johns is there. So, too, is Barry Shell. He's a real trier, Shell. Gives 100%. Johns picks it up. Plays on quickly. Out towards May. May using the left boot, puts it up high, walk is onto the ground, Field couldn't control it, running away with it there is Thompson, keeps the ball low and it's an accurate pass to find Clayton Lamb and I think we'll find Lamb will get better week in week out, he just needs a bit of football at the moment. The ball goes out towards Bubner, Lamb's picked up eight kicks and seven handballs, Bubner has trouble picking the ball up at all at the moment and eventually it goes out of play. Tonight of course 10.30 selected play of the earlier game tonight between Port Adelaide and the Panthers. Now the umpire about to bring the ball back into play. Outside the 50, the Tigers lean it, taken by Kretschmer. Over towards Rubinick, towards goal. Is the kick accurate? Hit the post. Uh, the uh, Tigers marching all over the top of Sturt at the moment, and uh, I'd be more disappointed about that uh, if I was Stephen Treat than... Maybe the result to date. Very important that Sturt finish this game off and uh, get a bit tougher about doing that. Yes, they have a little bit of the breeze at the moment. Lena takes a good mark. And you're right, they've got to go down fighting. They can still put some respectability on the scoreboard if they get a couple of goals. But uh, they won't do that by playing that type of football. Murphy, a little bit slow then, just a little bit casual. Picked up by Rubinick, started on the interchange bench. Puts it around his body. Underneath it there is Manson, and he's always been very strong over here. It's not much of him, but uh, let's have a look at it. Now, Richter, just a bit late on the scene, without being unfair to him. Maybe uh, camera tells a little bit of a lie there. He might have been uh, further away than I thought he was in the first place. He has won Mansell. He kicked it in this quarter. 
Mansell, 14 kicks, nine handballs and two goals. Not a bad effort. In 14, Sturt 4-4. Four, four, up towards centre-half forward for the Blues. Bromelo there. Coming out, Thompson pace. Can't pick up the football and he goes out of play. Robbie Thompson, Bromelo there. He's saying well done to, to, to Robbie Thompson. Jason Bromelo, number 28. 13-14, Sturt 4-4. Four, four. Disappointing performance by the Blues tonight. Stevenson in front. Hasn't taken a mark all night, Stevenson. Will Thompson put down after he kick it. No, says the umpire. Oh, strong mark, Clayton Lamb. What a good mark, Clayton Lamb. Second big overhead mark this quarter, Clayton Lamb. So we're starting to look a little bit more comfortable out there, Ken. Yeah, class player at the peak of his form. Towards centre half forward. Murphy makes one of his rare mistakes tonight. Bubner, ball into a huddle. And there'll be a bounce. <laughs> Mitchell punching the ball. <laughs> He's trying to get <laughs> Oh, dear me. But uh, the Glenelg players taking too many marks uncontested at the moment. And uh, we refer back to uh, Sturt having to finish this game off. Bubner, tackle by Murphy. Filled through it out, but straight to Hill. Hill towards centre half forward. Russell, Chig Whitten, through his hands. A chance for Fred Gold. Goes the way of Shell. Shell now back towards the centre of the ground. Walk, not favoured by the bounce. This allows Duthie in. Back towards Bow. Tigers had many options to Thompson towards half forward. But oh, Shell, good mark by Shell. Full of courage, and he's been around the place all night tonight. Hasn't played a bad game, the young fella. 11 kicks and eight handballs, and as I mentioned, only a few moments ago, always has a red-hot go. Free kick will go the way of Andrew Johns. Just get the feeling this bloke should be left to play in the middle, Andrew Johns. Get back to that form from two years ago. Only six kicks tonight. Just let him get a feel for what he's meant to be doing out there, and, uh, gee, he knows how to find the football. But uh, I'm sure Stephen Trigg, he's done a good job to get his side this far. And uh, hopefully they'll improve as the season progresses. Land did that well. Out to Rubinick. He's a live wire since coming onto the ground. The kick not accurate. And Rubinick kicks his second point for the quarter. But from the Tigers' point of view, the form of Clayton Lamb would be uh, under, uh, under view. He's taken uh, three marks this quarter, two very big marks, and uh, starting to run into a little bit of touch. Fred Gold with a kick in. Looking for Leanit. Over the top. Leanit. And Grant Rubinick towards Chicky outside the 50. Loses the football. McCulley goes in. Ball comes loose towards Chicky towards full forward. And a good strong mark has been taken in defence. On that occasion by Bubner. And it's from these positions, Ken, that uh, Glenelg cover their options so well. They usually pick up beautifully, get back quickly. And uh, from there, uh, Sturt haven't been able to get the ball down the ground quick enough tonight. Lean it to paint out the Johns. From the centre of the ground towards half four, looking for Stevenson in front. Can he mark? No, he can't. Off hands towards Wellsby. He's run down into a pack of players. And the umpire will have no option but to call for a bounce. And tomorrow morning when you're eating your cornflakes at 9.20 a.m. in the morning, you can sit back and watch World Cup cricket live from Hobart, Australia versus Zimbabwe. And, uh, well, the Aussies, you would think they'd have to win that one and maybe get some confidence back. As these boys battle it out here for the 92 Foundation Cup, Bromelo flicks the ball back to David Elliott, who will bounce at the 14 and a half minute mark at this final turn. Kitsky tapped it down to Gask, will kick around his body, puts it up high, nobody home though, and Rouvray takes an easy mark. Now he chips out a pass and goes out towards May. May's been a trier all night. He puts it back towards Gask. May's had 14 kicks for the night. Gask puts it up high. Kitsky, a strong mark. Three deep. Too much height for Thompson. Robbie Thompson saying he had the first touch on it. But I uh, would have paid the mark. And uh, Kitsky, back from St Kilda. A big man at centre-half forward. He and Stevenson are the two-pronged forwards that the Double Blues will, make, will build their entire forward thrust around this year. Been a bit disappointing tonight, Kitsky, but... Uh, other criticism might be levelled at players bringing the ball in just a little bit too slowly and allowing the big fellas from the Tigers to cover him. Ketchke, five marks and five kicks. Pretty, uh, pretty quiet night. Had you kicked the goal? Yes, he has. In 15, Sturt 5-4. Chance now for Walk towards full forward. Ketchke, had he found him? No. Chance now for Rube, for a Rube, right? He can't pick up the football. The base supporters want the free kick, but it's not forthcoming. 
coming up, selected play of the earlier game tonight, Port Adelaide versus South Adelaide. Very entertaining game of footy. It was a great game, Ken, and uh, people should look out for that uh, powerful South Adelaide forward line. Back in defence goes Rouvray, has Gibbs, he goes short. It, will it sit for him? It does. Now looks for leads further afield. He goes towards Rubenick. Beautifully put, put by Gibbs, and Rubenick completes the mark. They've really finished their plays off well tonight, the Tigers, Ken. They've been able to find a body nearly every time. Yes, they've used the ball extremely well, Rocky, that's for sure. And this man, you're right, you, you commented a moment ago, Neville, about the fact that uh, the longer the game has gone, the better this player has looked, Clayton Lamb. Wasn't a good kick on that occasion. The threat goal comes in and takes the mark on the half-back flank. 17 and a half minutes gone, the final term of the Foundation Cup Grand Final. Back towards centre wing. Good strong mark. It's his first for the night. Stevenson, well, that's unfair to give him the Bronx years because he's been a fine player for this uh, competition. Over to young May. May towards centre half forward, but it's all the bays here. A misunderstanding between Gibbs and Visca. Still plenty of time to, to mop up. Gibbs goes across the goals and out of play. Beautifully pinpointed kick, and uh, I agree with you. Stevenson has worked hard tonight, and uh, so too is Kitsky. They haven't had the ball delivered in that well tonight, and uh, both of them have, uh, have been under a lot of pressure. Stevenson's had to do the ruck work along with Kitsky up forward, and uh, both of them will be better players as of tonight. Uh, I think Sturt, as a, as a group, will be a lot better after tonight. There's plenty to point back to this after this contest. Lamb. Beautifully put by Clayton Lamb, straight to Michael Murphy, he's been a very good player, well that was too easily done by uh, Michael Murphy, goes towards Lyndon Bow, towards goal, and he has got it. Yes, that, uh, that play was just so obvious, and uh, Lyndon Bow made the effort to run down, and uh, there was no sturt defence that were actually coming across, coming up to, uh, to meet the player, and there you are on your screen, absolutely metres by himself. Had a chance to uh, almost fumble the bounce and recover it, but the uh, it's when a player running down the ground like that, what you really want, and Johns is the player there in your screen that's uh, responsible for him, but he got caught out and no players from defence came up to meet Bowen. It made it just that much easier for him. 15 kicks. I think the point you made, of course, uh, Neville, is the fact that uh, let's hope that Sturt can learn from this, uh, this exercise tonight. Well, I think they will, and I think uh, uh, Stephen Trigg will point to tonight. I mean, their effort and their endeavour and... Uh, and so on was fantastic tonight. They were so nervous in the first quarter. They made an umpteen errors and were only kept in the game by Glenelg's inaccuracy in front of goal. But uh, as the game went on, they just failed to make clean disposals to, to find the body and uh, it paid, uh, paid dearly against them. Bounced down, leaning over the top, taken by Kim Russell, painter. This man his usual brilliant self tonight. Picked up superbly on that occasion by Obst. It wasn't a good hand, but it was taken by Brian. Back to Obst, so both players making mistakes as Obst kicks around his body towards full forward. Ketsky in front and marks. A strong mark by the big man. Well, it's good to see him doing uh, doing it uh, arguably at the wrong end of the night. I mean, uh, Rouvray, uh, yeah, just caught out, and that's the size of the man. I mean, Rouvray is, uh, is a big man himself. Ketsky probably in the vicinity of about 197 centimetres. It's a beautiful looking athlete, and uh, let's hope that uh, he's in for a big year for the Blues. They certainly need him following, that's for sure. He's big and he's strong, and he has kicked Sturt's sixth goal. And his first, first goal himself. Let's have a look at it. Body work, leans back, and then just goes back into it. That's, back, that's his second goal. Uh, Kitschke, should I say, he kicked one just seconds ago. Mark it down, and very accurate off the boot. He's blessed with some beautiful skills, and uh, can get a leap in at the ball. Stephen Treek wants to persist with him at centre-half forward, and he and Stevenson will uh, have that little duo uh, between full forward and centre-half forward. It's just sadly drops out of the game on too many occasions at the moment as Gask with a high kick back towards centre-half forward. Phil from behind. But a good mark has been taken in defence by that man, Visca. VOG by 400 miles, that man. Handballs off to Gibbs. And almost a mark taken by Leonard. May towards Richter, Richter back towards half forward and Walk will mark, just inside the line. David Walk, coming on to the ground in this final turn, back towards centre half forward, Kitsky again, there is Kretschmer, couldn't take the mark, Sturt with a chance to Robertson, handballs off to Stevenson, may try to tap it out but couldn't do so, stolen by Kretschmer, he goes the way of Keast, back towards Bartlett, Bartlett marks at the second attempt. 
just so much force of Tiger Power. They're just there in numbers and they just go straight. They keep their body over the ball straight through. And really, their pace hasn't gone out of their game. They've been, uh, they've been at it very intense all night, the Tigers. Yes, they have hunted in packs with a great deal of strength. Rocky right there. Bo been a good player at, at centre wing. 17 kicks for the night. Not a bad performance. Tread gold. Being harassed by Chitwin. Quite content to see the ball go out of play inside the 50 metre line for the Tigers. And there's the Foundation Cup uh, on display. And it looks as though the Tigers will take it away, Rock. And I reckon inside there, Ken, there's a little number for about 17.5. And the Tigers uh, will be happy with that. The Blues will have to be happy with the uh, 10 big ones. And a bad night's work, $17,500. Players oh. working hard out there, but umpire Ellis is my ball, and I'll have a bounce. So yes. The, the, uh, the, the Tigers, you were saying, the gas goes to ground, Ken. The Tigers... Uh, just meeting the body, they're tackling as I said earlier, it's been superb the Tigers, when they make one it really sticks. They're going to have a very big year I think Rocky, as Chigwitten steals it off the pack and hits the post. Well he has two goals and he would have loved to finish off on that, uh, just the acting skipper tonight is Nick Chigwitten. Once again, he's a big time player but the Tigers have got plenty of them, Ken there, Ross Gibbs, you go through them, Clayton Lamb, John Fidge, Alan Bartlett, uh, Mark Russell, Michael Murphy, on it goes, Chick Whitten himself, Bromelow, there's plenty of them there and uh, they've really counted tonight. As we see on this occasion now, Bromelow coming away with the, with the uh, footy and in fact kicks the goal, so Bromelow getting the act as well. Bench number 28, the big fella, and uh, he's a goal kicking forward. He can uh, also do a defensive job as he had to, runs through the 50 metres, socks down, has a look at them, not much time to size it all up, kicking into a breeze, virtually directly head on into that, uh, that breeze. Happy about that. He's got a smile on his face, and so he should be. Murphy says, well done. The acting captain says, well done, and uh, and indeed it was. A good goal. His first for the Tigers. And the Tigers got some big man in the strength, too, with McCulley and Melican playing tonight. Got Thornborough to come back. Christie on his way back from injury. So there's some plenty of uh, tall timber around for the Tigers uh, in 1992. Off hands. Got to be a free kick. Being held on to with that possession. Young Obst is the player. Had a quiet night tonight, but he's a... Young player of the future. To get selected play coming up tonight. Between Port Adelaide and South Adelaide as Kitsky takes the mark. He's kicked two goals. Can he kick his third? He'll kick from about uh, 20 metres. And there's the siren. And Kitsky now. As we see Fidge in the bunker. Kitsky. Looking plenty of time. Kicks and has kicked accurately, has he? Yes, he has. That's his third goal. So Sturt, 7 4 46, go down to the Tigers, 15 16, 106. Well, that, uh, that goal by uh, Kitschke, his uh, third, all of them coming in the third term. And uh, well, when the game's over and done with, it's really not, uh, it's hard to make judgments about uh, that being the right time to kick them. Obviously, uh, Trigg would have loved it earlier in the night, but at least he finished off. And uh, there's his uh, opposition counterpart, number eight, John Fidge. He's uh, in sling, right arm, elbow trouble, was in ice earlier tonight and was in considerable pain. He left the ground in that second quarter and uh, he only managed, uh, before he left the ground, to kick uh, one goal. In fact, it was in the third quarter. And, uh, let's hope it's not too serious for him. In your screen, the Glenelg players, Chick Whitten, played well. Murphy, number 20, was an absolute star. He kicked four, handed out others, takes a big mark, cool as a cucumber. Clayton Lamb in the screen giving uh, Ross Gibbs a hug. What a great pair they make. And uh, Clayton Lamb's form tonight. Again, not too bad as the uh, as the game wore on. He just looked a little bit more comfortable, found the ball a bit better, and his hands cleaned up a bit. Yes, and they're going to have a very big year, Rocky, the Bays, uh, with, a, with, with a blend of, of youth and experience. We've seen some exciting youngsters emerge in, uh, in league football this year, but uh, Amy Stewart, number 42, is a very fine player. We, we've spoken about Mark Visca. Grant Rubinick had his moments tonight. And we can, in fact, go right through the sides. And let's not forget Sturt. They, uh, they were outclassed tonight by a better side. But, but uh, I think the point that you made a, a pertinent one, Rocky, that let's hope that they can learn from this experience tonight and that'll uh, hopefully help them in, uh, in 1992. They're, they're pretty disappointed, which is understandable. But uh, I'm sure that Stephen Trigg will, uh, will highlight the deficiencies that occurred tonight. Well, indeed they will. And uh, there's the final score tonight. Glenelg just far too good. A class above the Double Blues. 15-16-106. They ran out winners of the Foundation Cup Grand Final over Sturt 7-4-46. And the Glenelg players there. Michael Murphy, a good game at 10.5 forward. 
And just getting back to Sturt, uh, Ken, they, uh, they were very nervous in the early part yep. of the night and uh, they took just too long to settle down and uh, by, uh, and that's a good sign, too classy, and that's the way it did finish up. OK, let's now take you to Kim Dillon. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree, we saw two sides tonight display a lot of courage, but there's no question that the Glenelg Football Club thoroughly deserve to be the 1992 Foundation Premiers of South Australia. I would now like to introduce the trustee of Foundation South Australia, Mr Jim Jarvis, to present the awards. If I could call on the captain of the Double Blues, John Painter, to receive his and his side award for being the runners-up. And I'm sure, John, you'd like to say a few words on behalf of your supporters and your team. Well, to the supporters, uh, obviously, we're very sorry. Uh, to the sponsors, we're very grateful. And to the winners, we congratulate them. Talking of the winners, I'd now like to call on the captain of the Glenelg Football Club, Nicholas Chigwidden. I'd uh, just like to thank Foundation SA for putting it on. It's a great competition. Um, thanks, Sturt, for a great game. Obviously, they're going to be big improvers this year. And good luck to them for the rest of the season. All the blokes on the side. It was a hard game, and everyone just kept fighting on. But not only the blokes here, we've got 40 or 50 blokes out on the training track. So uh, this is for all of them. Thanks a lot, Sturt. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please respond in the appropriate fashion as the 1992 Foundation Cup Premiers of South Australia, the Glenelg Football Club, perform their lap of honour. At the Bay tonight, Nick Chickwitten I thought was uh, excellent uh, responding on half of the players and also John Painter. Congratulating the Tigers for their win in the 92 Foundation Cup. Just thinking of Jack, and uh, as the uh, Premiers do their uh, lap of honour, Ken, it must be just bitterly disappointed for him. He's had uh, had little luck in uh, in his career in regards to finals, and uh, he would have been looking to uh, maybe just add one pennant to his uh, to his uh, house before he retires. And let's not forget Kim Hodgman, of course, the coach of the Tigers. Uh, certainly uh, has done a marvellous job with it and he'd be a very happy man as he smiles with uh, John Snebecker right in front of the bunker. He's a happy man, uh, Hodgie, I can tell you. Well, he's uh, only in his second year as a coach and he took over from uh, a man and uh, he had to fill some pretty big shoes from Graham Corns and uh, straight off the track, straight into the coaching shoes and he's done a pretty good job. They were absolutely blit with, it, with injuries last year. Let's hope they have a better year this year. Four marks of the Bays are going to their tier squad. The uh, end result here, the Tigers winning the Foundation Cup. 15-16, 106. Sturt, 7-4-46. Stay with... Ha <laughs> ha, hide you beauty. Stay with Channel 9, live from Footy Park. Back shortly. And welcome back to Football Park. And there you see the result of the 1992 Grand Final. The 15-16, 106. Sturt, 7-4-46. Too much power, the Tigers, and uh, particularly too much power up forward. Ken Murphy belted four through, Russell kicked three, Chick Whitten and Mansell two each, and for Sturt, not enough of them, Damien Kitsky three and Robertson two. And uh, Rock, how did you see the best players, first of all, for the A's? Well, for the Bays, I thought that uh, Mark Visker just had to be, uh, I think, overall best man on ground. He was just superb tonight. Uh, I think Michael Murphy with his four, yep. and uh, I think Mark uh, Russell, uh, he kicked three, and he was always a dangerous player. 
And of course for Sturt, uh, I thought Shell did a great job in the back pocket, tough as you like, Jack Painter and uh, Rob Schaefer in the ruck, a promising young player. Well earlier tonight of course, Rock, we saw uh, a very interesting game between Port Adelaide and, and South Adelaide, a very yep. good game of footy. Well it was a very entertaining game of football and uh, at the end of the day, uh, South Adelaide just too good, too much power in their forward line and... Uh, we saw, uh, we saw Groom do well, McIntyre kicked three or four, and he's coming back into some real form too. Certainly is. Okay, let's now take you to our selected play. We pick it up at the start of the third quarter. Here we go. Start of the third quarter of the Foundation Cup minor final, South Adelaide versus Port Adelaide. And South Adelaide leading by nine points at half time and a very, very good second quarter. Kapler out of the middle, down toward the half forward line. Missed there by a couple of players. Rosonico is back on the ball for the Magpies. He's got space and a couple of metres, puts it across, dangerously across goals. Groom was there, couldn't take the mark. Now he's in there working hard. And comes out, dangerous, with the right boot, not his normal preferred kick. Troy always around the ball and uh, on this occasion, Rosonico takes it away. Short pass taken by Smallridge, who just wasn't quite sure what he would do on that occasion. He's gone back for his kick. Has two goals tonight. One of them was uh, late in that second quarter off the ground. It was a beauty. Port's only goal in that second quarter, though. Huddled in the middle. will have a bounce. Port Adelaide got away with the wind. A good start. Kick four. Didn't follow it up in the second quarter, though. And uh, south with the breeze, they came back. We're at Football Park Stadium, and it's looking beautiful. And uh, finally, Naley and uh, Groom were really responsible for South Adelaide's second quarter splurge. They got right back into it and took the lead by nine points. Boyd got the ball across to Ahern. This youngster's looking okay. Number 20 in your screen. He is Neville, North Melbourne and former Melbourne player. He's played eight AFL games. He was injured last year and Port reckon that he's a big hope. Let's have a look at him. From about 45, looks okay from here. That's a beauty. Well, John Ahern has done it well for the Magpies. He's kicked his second goal. He kicked one in the first quarter. On that occasion, he got into space and the ball was well put by Russell Boyd, who uh, worked down well from that full forward, half forward area. There he is, coming into the play and putting the ball up out in front. Trevina couldn't get near his opponent on that occasion. The pass was well executed. The kick was beautiful from 48 metres out right through the centre. So the gap closes. Three points to South Adelaide. Port led by 18 points after the first quarter. South by nine at half time. But it's a tight ball game now. The minor final contesting 8,000 for third and 6,000 for fourth. Not a lot in the prize money. More pride and getting some momentum for the season. Costner puts it in high, it's a big punch from Hughes. Opportunity for Rosonico. Did well to stay on his feet. Biachi, it's a chip, finds Buckley. A little bit quieter tonight, but uh, no one doubts his skills. Potential star, Hutton couldn't do anything with it. Naley, had a great second quarter. Opportunity there for, was Dittmar on the ground after the secret. He was on the bench for the first half. High to half forward. Oh, down goes. Somebody, it's a South Adelaide jumper. This was a wingman, like Costa number 35, 32 in fact. Yep, too high. McCarty, it was grim, it was the offending player. Loose ball, Buckley couldn't control it. On the ground, Bennett gets a quick hand to it, pushes it the way, Costa pushes his way through, North East is there. Nowhere to go, free kick, Costa too high. And the Magpies are throwing everything in. The tackle certainly was high, no doubt about that. And the free kick will go to the wingman in his normal position. Down toward the half forward area, players set themselves off hands. Chalmers was there. Handball came out. Bennett, the handball came out from Osborne around the body, looking for the player up forward. McIntyre's got it, snapped toward the goal. He's a great shot. Will it bounce? It will. It bounces truly. McIntyre's second goal. Superb piece of work by the big fella. Kicked one in the second quarter. Was held in the first term by Hughes. Got away a little bit. Not much time to move on that occasion. Slipped it around the body. And uh, got a bit, uh, a bit of luck with the bounce. Abernathy looks to the sky. And South Adelaide kicked their seventh in the second quarter. McIntyre kicked one. It was a short pass from Naley, a real beauty. Kicked from about 30 metres. Very mobile big man, along with Groom, a dangerous two-pronged forward line. 
7-7, play 6-4. South Adelaide still in control of this minor final. In Ruck Charm has got the tap out. In there picked up and kicked forward by Kapler toward that centre wing area. The bounce eludes several players. Fiacci is in there. Was it pushed in the back? No, the umpire decided to call it play on. Osmond came through. Kick was smothered. Picked up by Heath. The handball wide to Captain Bennett. Across to Trevina. Short pass in. Finds McIntyre on a long lead. And uh, he's got away from Roger Delaney, who surprisingly was off the ground in the first half. Yes, yeah, so I was surprised to see him on the bench he's played it uh, in the forward line for most of this foundation cup and uh, hasn't done a bad job let's see what he can do on McIntyre McIntyre lining up a long way out from goal into the breeze oh beautiful kick goal umpire says good enough for me McIntyre has his third well it's all there in the kick it was just a brilliant shot at goal not a lot of breeze, but uh, the breeze is going from right to left of your screen. So McIntyre's right foot it means he has to push it in deep on that left hand goal post, which he does. And you can see the umpire turns to his left, which meant the wind pushed it out. Just got there. Again, the contest in the middle. Chalmers up high, got the tap down, which was good. Dittmar came through to soccer it off the ground. Working hard was a Hearn in there, couldn't control. In fact, was grabbed with it. Bennett across to Naley. Short pass. South Adelaide controlling it out of the middle. Groom the long handball across. In there was Bone now. Long kick toward the goal front. In fact, Bone was back there. That wasn't uh, that player who kicked the ball in long. And the ball goes out of bounds in the forward pocket. And it'll be a throw in in that area. And I think that was Powell who kicked it in. Port Adelaide in a little bit of trouble. South of uh, only kick 1-1 one, one in the first quarter and the... Uh, now up to 8-7. The Port have only managed to add two goals since quarter time. So we understand Jack uh, had a few words to say at half time. Not that happy about their performance. They trail by 15 points. We're six minutes into the third quarter. On Carlin's screen a moment ago. He wouldn't be happy about it. 8-8 eight, eight, play 6-4. And is that holding the ball? Is that the way the rule is meant to be played? It is. And Ahern takes the free kick. John Ahern, the handball across was not his best because Rowan Smith was under all sorts of pressure. Bruce Abernathy from half back. Control, kick into the centre of the ground. Grimm was there, off hands. Beautifully taken, Naley. Handball long. The bounce is right for Groom. Can go at goal. Put it out in front. That was well tackled from behind. Well done by North East. The long handball comes back. Rosonico in a bit of strife has given it away. Groom can go straight to goal and makes no mistake. South Adelaide are really on top. That's his third. Tuesday. Beats me how he never made a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah, Laurel I was one of the greatest hits ever. A singer from the past. Have you ever thought about making a comeback? Good managers are hard to come by. With a squeaky clean image. What a treasure you've turned out to be. We could even mess up your image a bit, eh? Hey, Becomes man. Bill's Good ticket man. to the big time. The Frankie Kelly comeback. You'll never look back, Frankie. But all is not as it seems. It's called publicity, Shaz. But a feeling something big is about to break. Chances. Don't worry about Daddy. Daddy. 9.30 Tuesday on 9. Oh, I've been up to Cunningham's Warehouse, Cunningham's Warehouse, yes sirree. Invisible tape bargains, half inch roll, 50 cents, one inch roll, one dollar. 100 page lined reinforced refills, half normal price, one dollar. 10 page refillable photo album, what a bargain, three dollars. Royal Shadow E140 movie length VHS videotapes, fully guaranteed, four for ten dollars. Seedle toothpaste, assorted flavours, incredible value, one dollar. Blitz curly boards, buy of the season, fourteen ninety nine. Beach ball sets with Velcro grip action, bargain at six ninety nine. Cunningham's Warehouse, yes sirree. Good food, good health, with Max Walker. Used to be that a bloke could serve up just about anything in a barbie, but not these days. Now have a look here. This has got to be better than the stodgy stuff we used to eat. Fruit, celery, bread, cheese, delicious. <laughs> Crikey, this stuff might even be good for you. Brought to you by the Australian Dairy Corporation. For around $1,500, you can buy the very latest in lights, as featured in the latest design magazines. Or for $1,500, you can buy this light, as featured in the new Freedom Furniture catalogue. And also get the latest bookcase, sofa, a rug for the floor, a planter, coffee table, vase, blind, and prints. All for $1,500 in the new 68-page Freedom catalogue at your nearest Freedom store now. Freedom. Good design, great prices. You'll save buckets of money in carpet calls.
A 100% pure wool Berber clearing for $69 a litre. Here's a bonus extra. These carpets have a five-year stain protection warranty. A gorgeous velvet smooth plush, a steal at $49 a litre. Choose this cut and loop again, $49 a litre. Or carpet three rooms for only $6.99 fully laid. We've got the best prices in Australia. Call, call, carpet call. The experts in the trade. Score line, South Adelaide 10 8 68. They extend that lead over Port. 8 4 52, 16 points in it. Plenty of goals coming. Hutton, right down from his wing, switches the play. He's got over the far side of Hearn. He's kicked a goal this quarter already. Looks a likely type. Cleverly out of the hands of Trevina. Long on that far wing. Puts it in high. They set themselves. Grummet from behind. He's on Boyd. That's almost a mismatch in height. Groom does it brilliantly. So is the dummy. Setry's the player he got it to. Off the ground, Setry again. Opportunity for Smith. Opportunity, man, Setry. Manhandled, no free kick. Brockhurst desperate. A point. And that's the way it'll stand. South Adelaide 10-9-69. That lead Port Adelaide 8-4-52. Ben Harris waiting for his turn on the ground. I suspect he'll go into ruck and Chalmers will be relieved of that duty as South Adelaide through Steckle down towards centre wing Bennett with clever body work gives the opportunity for Quinn short pass deep and long to half forward Bone is there tackle from behind by Rosonico and well he was held on to too long according to the umpire so Randall Bone free kick McIntyre on the lead they're looking good South Adelaide in total control on the forward line and the delivery is superb Peter McIntyre lining up. Will kick from about 45 metres. Has three goals to his credit. And he comes, puts it out to the right-hand side, and it stays there. That's where I would have put it, but uh, the wind didn't bring it back. Uh, you would have used your left foot there, Bucky. Hard to pick whether you were a left or right footer. A difficult place to kick goals from at Football Park with the wind swirling around this Western stand at the southern end. Delaney puts it in high. Trevina goes for the punch. Fiaci off the ground. It'll hit the boundary line before anyone can get there. And we'll have a throw in. 15 minutes into the third quarter. No doubt about it. South Adelaide looking uh, to have control of this game. They've uh, worked it well into the breeze in this third quarter. Port Adelaide just not doing enough. Small ridge over the back. Tap away. Kapler and Kerry Brain is in there working hard. Soccer's along the ground cleverly and uh, just out of bounds again. Well, there's Michael Abbott, umpire on your uh, left of screen. Having a close look at things. He doesn't wear glasses when he umpires. I hope he wears some contacts, Bucky. Uh, he wouldn't like you saying that. But, uh, yes. About up-and-coming developing umpires when I say that he really uh, has been a star in, in past games in past seasons and making his uh, presence felt as an umpire Osborne put it in taken by Groom and Groom lining up 45 out long wrong side so uh, Chris Groom doesn't add to that three goals one each quarter but the Magpies are under plenty of pressure Indeed they are. That's a big forward line they've got to cope with. Peter McIntyre, Bone, Groom, Heath drops in every now and then. Plenty of big men in that Panther area up forward. Oh, underneath it was Shane uh, Grimm and Steckle pushed him out. Small ridge, handballs to nowhere really. Put Bennett and Setri under a lot of pressure. McCarty wants the boundary line. Setri says no, he chucks it out. Tried to find... Mark Dittmar on that occasion, on the ground from half-time, couldn't. Yes, so Mark Dittmar, number 29, is an interesting player, Neville. Uh, he's the son of Wally Dittmar, who played for Port Adelaide so many years ago, and uh, he's come up through the junior ranks, although he's played some time, I believe, in the Barossa Light district. It's on the bottom of the pack now, trying to work it out. Quinn tries to push it through. Smallridge takes him to ground, and we'll have another bounce. Merritt. Uh, forward for Port Adelaide, just on the 50 metre line. Gary Smallridge in your screen. And the umpires tonight, Tim Pfeiffer and Craig Dodderidge. Setri. Ditmar 
McCarty tries to come out of the back of the pack. He did that well under a lot of pressure, though. He's got some support. Brain, Steckel to ground. Brain again. Off Smith's knee, out of bounds. And uh, it looks like Captain Michael Bennett, who's uh, getting a little bit of attention there for a, be a, a knee strain or a, a calf. He's getting the, the calf massage, but also the knee checked as well. So let's hope that's not a serious injury. Plenty of pressure in the forward line for the Magpies, but not much scoring being done. They're trailing 8-5 to South Adelaide 10-10. Young Mark Dittmar in your screen. As I said, the son of Wally Dittmar, great full forward for the Magpies of past days. Stickle, a good tap down. The Panthers are out of trouble, only for a second though. Nathan Buckley's got the ball. He wants to get on with it. He just pushes it in long, looking for a big grab. Groom was behind, or should I say, Grimm was behind. Steck was with him though. Osborne's there. And Grimm, he's done a pretty good job at half forward. As Brian said earlier in the day, there he is in your screen, the big fella bending over. Had Mark Whitford, Michael Whitford on him early. The player left the ground and we presume replaced because he wasn't doing well and uh, David Steckle now got the job on him. In the forward line, thrown in for the Magpies. Chalmers tapped it over the back looking for a player. Tamke was there, got the handball out. Brockhurst around the body with the left boot under pressure but kept the ball in play. Troy has picked up a lot of touches this evening and he puts it back down toward the centre wing area. Off the hands, Trevina takes it beautifully and goes toward the half forward area. Danger for Port Adelaide here. Naley keeps it in. No, he doesn't. He tried hard. He was very close to the line and uh, the boundary umpire indicated it'll be a throw in. So 10-10 plays 8-5 and we've played over 20 minutes in this third quarter. And Mark Naley had a big second quarter. He uh, dished out a few goals, had three shots himself but missed a lot of them. All under pressure admittedly but uh, he's been around the pack. Got his hand on plenty of balls and he sent the Panthers forward on many occasions. And again, sits it out in front of Groom cleverly. The big fella looks, lifts the eyes. He's got Costa going backwards. Good work though from Bone. He talked to him as he was coming backwards. Said, you're right, keep coming. I'll look after you. And there was Onico there in the background. He puts it in high, Costa. They set themselves Delaney. Plenty of pressure on McIntyre. He's done well. Attempt by Hutton now is close to the line. Decided to keep it in, went across looking for Delaney. He couldn't keep it in play. So 17 points separates the two sides and the Panthers with a handy lead at the 21 minute mark as we go into time on. And there's the uh, coach of the Port Adelaide team, Jack Cale. Not a happy man as we're over 21 minutes in and a goal. Randall Bone has put it straight through the centre and that has made it awfully difficult for the Magpies. Well, Randall Bone, opportunist just with sheer strength, took the ball, lined up the goals, straight in and had no trouble posting his first goal. He's been reasonably quiet. Rosonico's done a good job on him at, uh, in the first two and a half quarters. Rosonico's been close, tight and, uh, and defensive. He's a big fella bone. He's uh, got a, a big future, only young. And he's just the sort of player where you look down and all of a sudden he's got two or three goals. He can get away from you. The margin is 23 points in favour of South Adelaide. They're looking good, the Panthers. The ball in the middle again. Harris is in there working hard for Port Adelaide, trying to get it out. And that's a stalemate. And, uh, ball A is not really happy with the attention. Pushes a couple of players around. Ben Harris gets up with the ball, and he'll contest the ruck contest. Still in the centre square. No one got that out. Naley did, or Troy, in fact, around the body. Picked off by Hutton who kicks around the body back to the half forward area. Players make position. Well done by Boyd as he picks it up. The handball across finds McCarty. In there was Dittmar and I think the push in the back was there and McCarty will take the free kick against Mark Dittmar. McCarty's kick is poorly put. Ball A's, Setri works it out. Goes to a Hearn. The youngster puts it in high. Chance for Chalmers. Good defensive work by Brockhurst. He got it back over the line. Umpire signals a point. Happy to concede it, the Panthers. So Port Adelaide move along to 8-6-54. They trail south 11-10-76. And uh, I sense a, uh, a big man problem at uh, Port Adelaide at the moment, having lost uh, fellows and uh, not being able really to replace a man of that size, Bucky. Yes, partly that would be, uh, that'd be true, Neville. There's no doubt about that. 
as Smallridge has taken the mark to kick from 50 metres, but I think maybe the problem is more in the forward area. I'm looking for a, a guy like Shane Grimm to start to control that centre-half forward position. The action is with Gary Smallridge from 50 metres. Breeze behind, kick is long enough but inaccurate. Doesn't help the Magpie cause greatly as they go to 8-7, trailing South Adelaide 11-10, and we're over 23 minutes into this third quarter. There's the scoreline. Smallridge has been roving tonight. He's uh, been in and out of the game, Trevina. Opportunity now, short. Oh, it's a poor kick. Beautifully read, though, by Paul Northeast. He goes on with it quickly. Ahern inside. Setri's the opportunist. Puts it in. Looks for Chalmers. Brockhurst met it over. Ran it. Opportunity now for Chalmers. The big fella puts it around the body. What a sensational goal. His first. We leave our selected play there of the third quarter, and you can see at three-quarter time, South LA led 11-10-76 to Port Adelaide 9-7-61, but the end result, a very convincing performance by South Adelaide, 15-16-106, Port Adelaide 10-8-68. And of course, so the goals, Rocky? Yes, Groom finished with four, Ken, great game. McIntyre in the pocket with three, Bone and Heath to each, and for Port Adelaide, Ahern, Smallridge and Grimm to each, but uh, just not enough. And South Adelaide, of course, winning 8,000, Port Adelaide 6,000, and headed to the best players. Well, I thought that uh, Chris Groom, uh, Mark Naley, Peter McIntyre with his three, and Simon Tamke on a halfback flank, young player, did well tonight for Port. It was very hard. John O'Hearn, young player, did well. Adrian Setri battled away. Paul Northeast and Gary Smallridge in patches, but a uh, very bit of strife, Port. W were you impressed with South? Well, I was tonight. They've, they've really lifted their rating. Uh, Mark Naley's form tonight, right back in it. Uh, young Osborne doing a few yep. things. Uh, Groom, Heath and, uh, and McIntyre in the forward line. Ken, they look pretty good, South. Right, well, going back to your comment about Port Adelaide, you made the point you feel they're in a bit of trouble. In what areas? Well, I do. I don't think they've got enough big men. They've lost Wes uh, Fellows. Wes Fellows, yep. And uh, they're, they're going with uh, Ben Harris off the bench. And uh, uh, Phillips tonight, I mean, Chris Groom really took him apart. He's a good player, though, Rocky, this well, young kid. He's a great player, but uh, I have enormous respect for... Uh, for Greg Phillips, yep. and I don't think it's the end of him. I'm just saying I haven't seen a young player do that to him before. And uh, from that point of view, I thought Port looked like a bit of trouble. They're trying to get uh, Grimm at half forward to do mm -hmm. something, but uh, they're battling away with that. But uh, uh, there's a long way to go, and Port are usually there at the end. That's right. And, of course, in the late game, Glenelg defeated Sturt in the grand final of the Foundation Cup. And, of course, next week, it kicks off the minor round, Rocky, and we have That's live right. football, North Adelaide versus Port Adelaide, live from 4.30 right through until 6 o'clock. Look forward to it. be absolutely fantastic. OK, coming up very, very shortly, the world tonight with Clive Robertson. Thanks for your company. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the coverage or our coverage of the big one tonight between Glenelg and Sturt from Football Park. Bye, everyone. Bye. This has been another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.